Hey friends, it's Carol Saltbox Stitcher back for another video and this is episode number Okay. He always starts with okay. <laughs> January 17th. Yes, next week. <laughs> There's a birthday and it would be the year of that birth. The last two digits. Lindsay, our daughter, was born in 1986, so this must be video 86. Very good. So that was an easy one. Yeah. You got off easy. Okay. Now you can start thinking about the next one. Hi, how are you? Um, wow, that was loud. So it's time for the fine, the uh, dreaded whip parade. I one time saw somebody um, post something somewhere and they said, a whip parade to them is like watching paint dry. And I thought, well, that could be good and that could be bad. Because <laughs> watching paint dry seems a little boring, but my father was in outdoor advertising. He was an, he really was an artist. And um, they probably enjoyed seeing paint dry. <laughs> Anyway, um, I talked Mr. Saltbox into hanging the new um, pieces, not new, but different pieces on the wall behind me. So I'm going to talk about each one, the name of it. I can't tell you what I stitched it on. If you're curious, I can go back to my book and let you know. But um, anyway, so these are ones and... He did a very good job. And before I tell you what each one is, a lot of people ask, how do we hang samplers and stuff on the wall? Well, A, I don't use glass, so I'm not worried if it falls off the wall and damages the frame. Of course, that's not good, but it can be repaired. Where if you have glass all in your stitching and your linen, that could be bad. But how do we hang them? We either use these little gold things like this. These used to be his favorite. And yes, we have holes in the walls. It's a challenge. The other one, now he likes these. It's, um, I'll show you the front of the box. I probably got it from Amazon. They're called bank pins. One and a half inch black bank pins. And this is a half pound box, so these will outlive me, I'm sure. I don't think they were very expensive, but that's what we hang them with. So now I'm going to talk about each one, and then he can insert a picture. So I'm going to start here. This one is Sarah Turner, right there. That one is by Margaret and Margaret, Sarah T. Turner. The one next to it is Anna Grader. And that one is by Scarlet House. The one next to that, right here on the bottom, is Isabella Fox by GGR. Going up, this one is Mary Jane Smallman. S-M-A-L-L-M-A-N by With Thy Needle and Thread. This is Mary Bars, and this one's large. It's kind of it doesn't look as big in the picture, but this is probably the biggest sampler I've done. And this is by Stacy Nash. It's one of my very favorites. Going up, you can't see it, but on above Mary Bars is the Pink House sampler, and I have put my mother's father's mother. Laura, Laura Fields Thompson. Next to that is the Smith Sampler. That is by Scarlet House. And then on the far is Mary Betchel, also by Scarlet House. So he'll insert a close-up of those individually. So here he comes again to watch me. Where's my coffee? You want some coffee? Was mine in the microwave? No. Oh. Hmm. I don't know what I did with my coffee. It's all right. Never mind. That's fine. 
Um, so first I'm going to show you my progress on my January sampler. And then I'm going to start going through my whips. I did not include some of the whips that are Christmas or Halloween or fall. Because I won't work on those till then either. And I came out with close to 40. I always thought I had like 80, but I really don't have that many. So I was really happy. The other thing I wanted to say that I'm going to do, I will continue to write things in my book of days. And that's really just to keep track of what I finished during the month and what I was stitching on day by day. But I'm going to use this book. And this is by Ardith Designs. And I like it because it ha it's, for, it's a sampler stitching. You know, the hardest thing for me is always the first page. What should you put on the first page? Should you make it significant like the first sampler you ever did? Should you make it what you're working on now at the beginning of the year? Once I get past the first couple pages, I'm, I'm good to go. But I like the style of this because it has room for a picture. And now that I have my little printer, and a lot of people have asked, how do I like my printer? I haven't used it a whole lot. I do like it. I think it has great clear pictures, but it is not sticky backed, which is fine by me. I'll use double stick tape. And there may be instances where I want to move it. So maybe not having sticky back is fine. But to me, that's not that big a deal. But I like that there's a big space for a picture. So it says title, designer, um, sampler era, and theme. So I guess if it was like a Scottish sampler or American sampler, you could put that. Or like a um, band sampler. That would be like a theme or a um, pastoral type of sampler. That could go there too. Reproduction, adaptation, or original. So like some of the Blackbird ones are adaptations from originals. Chart dimensions, finished designs, size, date acquired. I won't put date acquired because I don't always know that. Oh, I thought I had a cup. I could find the other one. That's about some man that you know. A manna? Ha ha ha. Oh, he thinks he's so clever. Please don't encourage him. Specialty stitches. So if it had over one or queen stitches type of finish oh that would be like if you hem stitched it floss fibers and fabric information important details about the sampler so like if you change the colors or any of that anyway i like the layout of this it has joy to stitch <laughs> some hearts so that you can you know fill in was it a five heart <laughs> like five star project bag or storage place so you know i just like the layout of this and I like the different um, categories or so once I get started I'm going to um, and I'm gonna have this spiral bound that's why I haven't started it yet because I want to have it spiral bound it's by Artist Designs and I think it's pretty much available wherever it says it's a notebook for keeping track of my sampler stitching and other historic needlework projects. So you could even put like, you know, if you did a wool piece or something, you could put that in there. You could put whatever you want in there. Okay, so um, I talked about the wall. I talked about my book I'm gonna keep in addition to book of days. Then I have this, a lot of people always ask what's back here. This is Button-Eyed Posies by Scarlet House. And technically, it's supposed to be, I think, 80 today. So I don't do snowman. <laughs> snowman in January, February. I'm ready for spring. So up above here, you can't see them, but I have um, watering cans because I like to put watering cans out in the spring. I have three or four of them. Okay, so stitching. Um, this is the piece that I picked for my January stitch. Margaret Felicia Dyson. I love this piece. I am using a lakeside um, vintage buttercream. Lakeside 
vintage buttercream fat quarter, 40 count. It fits nicely on a fat quarter. And this is by Fox and Rabbit. Now, I will tell you one thing. On this chart, not on the model stitch, but on this chart, there's a red, kind of a little bit of a geometric kind of in and out, in and out type border beyond this floral border. I've looked up people that have stitched this and I can't find anybody that stitched that red, but it is charted. So if you wanted to stitch the red, I'm not going to stitch it. And I kind of decided that by accident because I was intending to wait until I had it, you know, completed and then decide, do I want to um, stitch that extra border? But because I cut it kind of close over here, it's about, I don't know, two and a half inches. But if that border would stick out. And so that would only leave me like, you know, like that much of a margin. That's not a whole lot, especially depending on where I get it framed. But this is my progress so far. I'm working on the basket of flowers in the middle. And <clears throat> these border flowers have six colors per flower. So they're going to take a minute or two. So there's the green and then there's a lighter green inside and then there's yellow, then there's white, then there's lighter pink and then there's red. So what I've decided to do, you're kind of noisy and you're <laughs> slurping your coffee. You want this last bite? No. They're really good. I know. Hush. <sighs> I have to do it when he's here because I use his phone. They're so special. he really likes thinking that he's part of this. <laughs> anyway. Um, so what I've decided to do is to take like the first color and go all the way around with the first color, then take the second color and go all the way around with the second color. So that way you can get into a pattern, not necessarily a rhythm, but a pattern. So in other words, if you have three white and then you go over one up one and you have two white and then you come back down around the yellow or whatever, you get in a in a pattern of how to stitch that quickly rather than always looking at the chart and thinking okay where's the next white stitch because to me that's tedious so once i get a few of the flowers under my belt then i can start so like here i've done the white and the yellow and then the inside of the green no i didn't do the inside of the green on that i did it down here you can see the there's two colors on this part of the flower. So then I've done the white and the green, and then I've gone all the way around. I mean the white and the yellow and the green. And then I've gone all the way around with the yellow. So I don't want to wait for these flowers at the end because then I get mad at myself because it's like, oh, all I have to do is these flowers. And they can get, they can take a minute or two. Anyway, this is where I am. The basket kind of, to me, is kind of like an argyle. It's going to be a beautiful sampler. I said I was using 40 count vintage buttercream by Lakeside. And I'm using all of the called for Averisois. There is this purpley lavender in there, so it's not my favorite, but I do like the piece, so. Okay, now my whip parade. So, um, I didn't iron any of these. Some of them have been in a bag for a year, so we'll just see how this, hold on, how this goes. I'll even show you the project bag. I don't usually do that. This um, 
this Blackbird fabric. And I believe this was made by Christy Crosshatch Quilts and I sent her the fabric and then she made this for me. I paid her, but you know what I mean. So let's see what's in my Blackbird whips. There's multiple ones in here. Now, is everything a whip? I don't know. I don't know. The biggest one is Little Birds. So these are Blackbird. And I'm stitching this on the called for 30, no, I'm stitching on 40 count Heartland. And I don't have a lot of progress, but a teeny bit. So I'm going down. And this is one I definitely want to get back to this year. Some of them, some of these are big pieces, so I don't know that I'll get back to them. We'll see. No time like the present, but so that's my progress. Not a lot, but it's more than just a start. I mean, it's more than just a few. Seems like when I was doing this, I came out, I was goofed up on the border and I stopped for some reason to find. And that one I'm using the, uh, called for overdice. Very Blackbird. Subtle greens, subtle tans, a little bit of blue, and some reds. So that's Little Birds. The next one, oh, I don't have the chart for this. This is, this goes in a matchbox, and I got this, um, it's an over one piece. And this one I definitely will finish this year. If I find the chart, I'll show you. I thought it was in here. I guess I need to find the chart to finish it. So anyway, that's, oh, here it is. I knew it had something to do with home, my home. I got this at the 2019 Stitch Camp at Country Sampler. Barb was there, but not Alma. And it, we got the little box that goes in. So I definitely want to finish that. It's not that there's a lot of stitches, but I have most of the house done. So. so that is next. And all of these threads, all of these threads. Well, this was partly for coming to my garden too. It was the same thread. So I didn't take them off the ring. Cause that, we got that at the same time. The next one, I don't know if I'll call this a whip. This is um, We Live in Hope. And this was a retreat piece, but I think this is out. Also, I think this was 2019 at the Dying to Stitch retreat. That was the one and only time I've been to Dying to Stitch. These are the colors. And this has a ship on it. Okay, I'll show you. This is barely a start. This is what you do at a retreat. So is that a whip? I guess, I don't know. It's on the called for R&R &R something something. Looks like, oh, Vintage Honey, 36 count. So I was talking to Alma. So see, there's the ship. We Live in Hope. This may be in Schoolgirl Sampler book. I don't know. But I was talking to Alma at Coulter Station in uh, at the retreat in September, and I told her the story of my grandmother's brother. Maybe I've told you this before. If I have, just ignore me. Um, in World War One, back before they had <laughs> cell phones, I don't even know if you could call, f you know, like country to country. Maybe you could. I don't know. Anyway, he sent a telegram to the family. And their last name was Sailing. S-A-L-I-N-G. Sailing. In fact, I put my grandmother's name on Come Into My Garden. So this is her brother in World War I. And he sent a telegram that said, Sailing, Sailing, Safe. Because he was in the Navy. Sailing, Sailing, Safe. 
So I've always heard that story, and, and I was telling Alma about that story, and she said, oh, you need to put that on the back of that sampler when you finish it. Um, I think his name was James, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was James. And, um, you know, because those stories get lost. I mean, I'm sure my kids are like, yeah, whatever, Mom. <laughs> now, when they're my age, or maybe when their kids are grown, they'll start thinking more about that kind of thing. But, you know, those are the kind of stories, like Alma was encouraging me to make sure that I pass that story on through needlework. This is the next one. This is Maria Selby Humphrey. And this one, there is not, this is the antique sampler, the original. I, don't know what, I never know whether to call it the antique or the original. Synonymous, actually. Maria Selby Humphrey, 1831. This is not a model that's been stitched from the antique. This is the actual antique. So this is how she did some of her stitches. <laughs> what a crack up. So this is one I definitely want to get back to this year. The colors are very subtle, very blackbird, a little bit of green. A little bit of blue and I have quite a bit done on this one sorry for the center fold so it's not over one but I've started the verse I don't know why I've jumped around so much on this the bottom is actually satin stitched under that basket so I have all of that stuff at the top border finished and then I've done some of the bands. So I've seen this one finished on people's walls and I really need to finish it. But see some of these, I thought there were three in this bag. What am I up to? Five. One, two, three, four. This is five. This is Sarah's house. Uh, Loose Feathers, summer 2012. And this is the antique for the one I want to do. Actually, I could do every one of these. I love this little, this little pin basket too. Love this. Anyway, I think it's good to go through your whips. You know, maybe it's good to watch paint dry. <laughs> Occasionally. You know, it kind of re-energizes uh, you to get things finished. Because sometimes you get tunnel vision, you're on one or two things, or something brand new and shiny comes out, and you think, oh, I want to stitch that. I don't do that quite as much. I, I will order a chart, and I may kit it. But I don't jump right in. Sometimes at retreats, I'll put a few stitches in. But I, I like to really... Well, I like to have a diverse group of samplers that I'm working on so that I might have some that are Blackbird that are really adaptations. I have some by Scarlet House that are reproductions and then I like to have some smalls and I, I, I kind of stay in one lane. I don't do like Mirabilia's or Hades or any of those but on the other hand I like to have diversity of designers and I don't know. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyway, this is Sarah's house, and it calls for silks, which is what I'm using, and I kind of got a little bit bump in the road because there's supposed to be two different colors of green. You can see one's kind of tealish and the other's a little bit more evergreen. And I don't know why, but somehow that just kind of like stalled me. And this is not a big chart. It's 122 by 233, but, you know, there's a lot of open space around that, between the border and the center. So this is definitely on my sooner rather than later. I think that's how uh, Lisa Kindred Stitcher, she calls it sooner rather than later. And I was going to tell you what this is on. This is on vintage buttercream, butter, no, sorry, butter, butter pecan. Where did I put the piece? There it is. Butter pecan, very little done on this. So it goes like this. You know, some of these, are they whips? Maybe, maybe not, maybe they're just starts. 
but there's still ones that I want to do. So I'm not discounting the fact that there's not a lot done on them. This one is called Berry Time. I started this one maybe 2021. And I started it with a friend. Of course, she has hers finished and completely framed and all that. This is an older Loose Feathers. It's called, uh, it's Berry Time Loose Feathers Pattern 37. I don't know if this has ever been reproduced. Um, it also, ha it has also a, um, a pattern for a stitched berry, strawberry. And I think I want to do that. I think that looks really fun. So this one, here's where I am on this one. And I did, or, the original kit I got was like 30 count and I did change it to 40 count something. I don't think I wrote it down because it only has one color. So I don't have the floss on a ring. I hate hearing my voice. 30 count iced cappuccino by r and is what it was originally on. It's only, it's 86 by 239, so it's long and skinny. But it's really pretty. Are you seeing it? Let's hold it up a little more. So I really just, I have some of the edges done, and I just, so I've basically done the border, and I just need to do the baskets. That would definitely be this spring. And I'm using the called for, uh, well, now it's classic color works. It used to be Crescent Colors, Wild Berries. So those are my Blackbird Whips. Now I do also have a couple Halloween ones and or fall. I'm not counting them. So what was that? Six? Some of them are that little matchbox thing. Some of those will go fast. The berry one. Okay, the next one. This is a bag. Not sure where I got this bag. I didn't make this one. And this is the infamous um, Coming to America. I love this. Don't ask me why I haven't finished it. I love the shape of it. Got started on it, and then so, you know, I just, I just said I'm not attracted to new shiny things. <laughs> I'll get them, but obviously I must be. So just forget that whole thing I just said. I'm using forty count something, whatever it calls for, with the called for colors. I bought the box. So whatever came in the boxes. I have the fabric. Uh, William Bradford. His journal. This all came with it. Very cool. So I just need to do this. And you know, I'm not opposed to this one being kind of ongoing. I'm using 40 count vintage country mocha. I have the whole border done and the top of the ship I'm working on. So it's not small, but I really like this and I need to get back to it. And then in that same I haven't started this, but this came with it too, Harvest Blessings. Actually, it was looking for this this year. That's the danger when you put comp companion <laughs> pieces in with something. So that's, I'm not counting, I'm just showing. More with thy needle and thread, I did make this bag. I mean, it was a panel type thing and then you just follow Brenda's instructions. And I have three things in here, maybe four. The first one is Manor at Quaker Hill. This is by With Thy Needle and Thread. I'm using all of the called for. Uh, 
40, no, I take that back. I'm using 40 count fawn by Picture This Plus. It actually calls for um, legacy. And this is where I am. So I have part of one border done and I'm working on the top border. Some of these I just don't have a lot. They need, they need some time. So that's that pattern using the called for colors. The next one is something that, mm, that's just a piece of fabric. Interesting. <laughs> Might need that sometime. I think I had that in there for another chart and I took that chart out. This is called Needle and Thread. Uh, Kathy Lounsbury, who's one of the so-and-sos. I think she's the one that finished this recently, but she changed the color of the dress. I'm using the 36 count mellow that it calls for by Picture This Plus. Sorry, these are so wrinkled. And this one I have quite a bit done. I'm working on her dress. Can you see? And I've got the grass finished. So really, once I get her dress done, you know, then it's just these things on the side. So this will be fun doing this spring. And I have a whole big project bag full of uh, stitching kind of related pieces, you know, like Keeper of the Pins. I haven't finished all of those. I finished, I think, three um, different ones, you know, about, there's some Kathy Barrick. There's a little bit of everything, anything that's about stitching. And these are the colors that I'm using for that. And back in the day, Brenda, some of Brenda's older charts, she called for Valdani. So I did find Valdani on a skein. I don't know the difference. I know a lot of people use Valdani for wool applique and for punch needle. So I need to finish that one. The next one, so there were three in here. I'm not sure who I saw finish this, but I just loved it. Brick House Sampler, again by With Thy Needle and Thread. And this one I'm using the called for somewhere in here, here, there. Brick House Sampler. Complete with loose thread. And this one, I have a start on the bottom border. See, a lot of these I don't have a lot of progress. But I still want to finish them. So just because I don't have a lot of progress, to me, everybody has their own interpretation of what a whip is, what a start is, you know, all of that. But for me, it's something I still want to do. So I just need to pull it out and give it some time. You know, and some of these, you know, maybe I'm stitching on it and then all of a sudden it's sampler September. And so then I put that away and I think, okay, I'm gonna work on something that's a sampler. Or maybe it's um, Christmas stitching and I put it away. Or maybe it's patriotic stitching. So because I like to stitch in the season, some of these ones that aren't necessarily seasonal, Although, to me, a lot of these could be spring because they have a lot of flowers. You know, Blackbird has birds, flowers, you know, that kind of thing. So, summer, spring and summery. Okay, this one, and again, I this is a restart. I've restarted this a couple times, and there's very little, there's very little done on it. And I still might restart this one. This is Lucy Red Sampler. It's by Homespun Elegance. Oops. The chart's falling out. I've seen this before on a lot of people's walls, but if you'll see, the color is more like a Weeks Cocoa. And the piece that I'm using is not written down. 
I think this is either vintage light exemplar. I think it's vintage light exemplar. Let me move my coffee. Oh yeah, just what it says, 40 count. It says it's vintage exemplar, but to me it's a little bit light for vintage exemplar. So I have the start of this top border. It's very ghosty. But if you'll notice on the pattern, you can't see it either. And I really want to do this. The first two bands on this thing, you can't even see. You can't see the first alphabet. See, there's an alphabet right here. So do I keep going? I don't know. Another project bag. I think I bought these from somebody that was putting them out around the time coming to America. So I have two of those. So I still may restart this one. I don't know. I don't know. But I really like it and I want to have it done and on my wall. Very neutral colors. I don't think I touched this all of last year. So this this will have to be when I have some time to really ponder. I don't mind ghosty, but I I should what I should do is start at the bottom. And then see. You know, because if I start at the bottom, well that ghost alphabet goes all the way around. But if I started down here where the houses are, or this pot of flowers, I might be a little more enamored with it. I don't think it says what it was you what was used originally. Because this is an old chart. Uh, let's see. Has her fax number, telephone number. Um. Anyway, I thought about change. I'm, I'm not good at changing colors, so I don't know. But I definitely want this on my walls. Oh, I forgot to tell you. It's Lucy Red Sampler, but it's Reproduction Sampler number three. And there were, I think I have a couple others. So there were definitely three, and I'm, I own all of them, I believe. Sorry, I have to take time to put these things back. Sort of. <laughs> Floss is hanging out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, the next one, and this is a bag from... Oh gosh, I can't remember her name. But I do love her bags. This is His Eyes on the Sparrow. I also have Consider the Lilies, which is funny. <laughs> Our pastor preached from this, this scripture this past week, Consider the Lilies. They neither toil nor spin. So I have that kitted in here, but I haven't started it, so it's not a whip. Not that, not that ambitious yet. <laughs> so here's... But when I do, here's the here's the floss and the linen for it. So this is um, his eyes on the sparrow. For a while, this was my Sunday stitch, and I got quite a bit done. Let me move my needle here. I'm using 36 count Heartland. And this is my progress. So I have quite a bit of it finished. I did not do the border all the way around like I normally do. And I sort of wish that I had changed the house color because some people have changed the house color, but I'm certainly not going to go back and take it out. And I do have a mistake in here somewhere. But again, I'm not going to... It's It has to do with the cartouche is just a little bit too low, one stitch too low. So I'm not worried about that. So this might go back to being my Sunday stitch once I finished Margaret Dyson. 
by oh, Fox and Rabbit. My January one that I'm working on. It's getting warm in here. Dear. He walks around with a sweatshirt on all the time. I'm usually like... <laughs> but according to him, he never touches the thermostat. I don't... I never touch it. Oh... When you live with somebody for a while, it just becomes funny. <laughs> funny, you funny. believe about half of what she says. No, they know they can believe everything. I tell them the right linen, the colors, the name of the charts. They know they can believe me. I love this one, and this is one I definitely... Did I say... I think I scared somebody. I just said it too loud. I have had the funniest comment. <laughs> one of the comments. One time, I could hear him. He was in cooking something in the microwave and I could hear the beep and all of that and I said what are you cooking well somebody was watching it on their tv and when I said what are you cooking her husband came out of the kitchen and said you know what I'm cooking <laughs> now that's a crack up <laughs> anyway this is called peaceful paradise this is by midsummer night designs I have a whole huge project bag full of things that I originally used to say I wanted to make a Sunday school wall, which is like stories from the Bible or whatever. Not whatever, but you know what I mean? <laughs> things that you would learn in Sunday school, you know, Noah's Ark, um, and the flood. And anyway, this is Peaceful Paradise, and this has the 23rd Psalm. Mm -hmm. What else does it have? I don't know. It had some other scripture on it. But I love it because it looks like the two tablets. Again, barely a start. I'm using the called for... And I got this chart from the attic. Because I don't know that this is readily available. Looks like I'm using Vintage Exemplar. High Lakeside. And here are the called for... Oh my gosh, don't turn that on. That'd be too loud. He's coming to get me a fan. Dear, it'd I'm be your too biggest loud. biggest fan. Oh my gosh. That's going to be too loud. This is my nighttime fan. Also, my white noise. Anyway, I'm using the called for over dies and a few DMC. That does feel good though. And this is my progress. And in this project bag that I didn't bring out, I'll show it sometime. I have things like um, The Flood by uh, Plum Street, um, Paradise Lost by Plum Street. Anyway, some of those ones that she has done that are big pieces. So this is one I want to get back to. Now to me, I don't think it's big. And there's a lot of grass at the bottom. But words go really fast. So Peaceful Paradise by Midsummer Night Designs. I love that one. And sometimes I forget about it because I had it in that one project bag. And... Okay, the next one is, um, these are a couple Scarlet House ones. I keep showing you one of them. If I don't get it done soon, I'm just going to, I've never abandoned a piece other than, you know, something that was like a little duck from 20, 40 years ago. But I've never really abandoned anything. But this one I really want to finish. I think Brenda has this on her wall. It's Mary Lindley, 1829, by the Scarlet House. And I don't know what I don't know what the holdup is for this. I've seen it stitched. I really like it. It's done with Meadow Rue by Lakeside, but somehow I just don't get back to it. I'm still on the border, and it's small. It's not very big. I'd have to really figure out where I am. Probably here, because I generally start up in the left corner, and then I go down, and then I come back and go across. That's kind of my 
and it's done with silks and I know I've stole some of the silks and I've replaced them <laughs> but it's all classic color works Belsois. that's a need to finish this year just because the last one that I said I've never abandoned anything I don't know this is one of those charts that has a lot not just words that are over one but a lot of um, a lot of the motifs are over one. It's Ellen Strick, 1849. I started it in 2018, no, 2018 or 2019, something like that. It's my oldest whip, other than Anne Grimshaw is pretty old. This one might have been 2018. I love it. Um, I think this is one that Brenda might have the antique on her wall that she bought it from the Scarlet House. I love it, but there's a lot of over one. And I'm using Tudor silks, which are very fine, thin threads, so that should make it really easy. This one I did pick up this year. I did actually work on it a little bit. Because at one time, the only over one that I had on done was uh, Jesus Savior. So I did work on a couple of the bands. Oh, this is terribly wrinkled. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can hold it. So I did work on a little bit of the words. The other thing is it's on 46 count. And I really like to do full crosses. I really do. I just don't like the look of tent stitch. Now on, th on 46 count, is anybody going to notice? Probably not. But I know. <laughs> oh, that's just weird. Kitten Stitcher Teresa, she says she likes to do full crosses too. So the house is done. And this is just one that I either need to put up or shut up. What a glorious day that would be when this gets finished. <laughs> I would be so happy. And this is one of the things I'm going to be using my, um, not this, but I'm going to be using my little printer. And I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to, since I have all my whips out, is to hang a tag so that I have pictures of what's in the bag. I love the fabric better than the plastic front, but the plastic front has its advantages because you can see what's in it. This is another fancy project bag. <laughs> this, this was made by probably Amazon. I don't know. This is Ann Dale. She's been a problem child since the beginning. The flosses are like just a mess because I just don't know. Every time I get this is by Teresa Kitten Stitcher. I actually have two of the, no, I don't have two of the pattern. I had two and I gave one away. Um, she's gorgeous. Lisa Kindred Stitcher has done her. Antale 1827, big and beautiful. The count is 402 by 531. So here's the deal with this one. Teresa did it on Vintage Pear. I went to a retreat and I showed my progress on vintage pair to Teresa and she said, oh yeah, that's a lot darker than her vintage pair. 40 count vintage pair by Lakeside. And part of the problem is when you use any kind of a fluorescent light, then it looks even greener. But when I get it out in this light, I think, you know, I might kind of like this color. That's pretty true. So this is all I've done. I don't know if that's a whip, but it's definitely one I want to do. And I've kind of resigned myself to the fact I'm just gonna keep going and use this vintage pair. Cause you have to buy a fat half. So it's an investment to just buy this and then not use it. I think I'm just gonna keep going and just like ignore it, the color. 
till I get it done and then I'll be like, see, it turned out fine. It also has a lot of green in the colors. So, you know, when you start putting, well, that will probably show up, but there's some of them, it's like, are these gonna show up? That's gonna be, so maybe I just need to brighten up some of the whites. I don't know. Right now it's a big hairy mess. <laughs> but I love this kind of tealy color and this mulberry kind of color. Most of it's MPI, there's some DMC, there's, there's some Belle Soie. there's just a little bit of everything, which is the called for. And I have some notes because I've looked at the uh, overdyed cottons. I've looked at the DMC just to try to figure out what's going to show up. See, like this, when you get a single strand of that, it looks like, oh, yeah, that looks like that'll show up. But then you get a single strand. Is it going to show up? I don't know. And so what if there's a little ghost? You know, there's a lot, I'm sure there's a lot of antiques that have faded and there's ghost stitching and everybody thinks they're just fabulous, so. Is that a whip? I don't know. We'll see. This is definitely a whip. This is my um, Jane Atkinson and this is, I definitely want to finish this year. This is one I'm definitely going to... Can I say definitely one more time? I'm definitely going to get back to this in um, February. And this one is by the Scarlet Letter. I'm using 40 count lentil, I believe. Why didn't I write that down? That's weird. Jane Atkinson by the Scarlet Letter. If you want to see it finished, go to Yvette Gonzalez. Her Instagram is Yvette Go. She has it finished and framed. I'm really quite jealous, Yvette, really quite jealous. And here's what I'm using, yes. 40 count lentil, not vintage, just lentil by Lakeside. And this is where I am. So I have quite a bit finished on her. And I think this is the bottom here. So she's big, she's 20 some inches. There's also a lot of over one. Look how pretty she is. Yeah, this is definitely going to get done this year, for sure. And this one I have in a Stitch Folk bag by Barry. I don't have a lot of hers, but I love each one that I do have. That was one that I, um, I think you could pre-order. I never seem to have luck with the ones that you just, and this is another Stitch Folk bag. Very pretty. This one I've had a little bit of color issues, but I've seen people finish it and it's gorgeous. And so I'm just going to keep going. The second guessing myself is sometimes my problem. I mean, I think we all do it, don't you? I mean... Or we think, oh, is this the right color? Oh, does this color go good next to that color? Oh, is this color going to show up? This is Mary Gibson 1824 sampler from the Hasselmere Museum. You can still get this. I've seen a couple people that have sent me their... F <laughs> no, they have not sent me their finished piece. They've sent me pictures of their finished piece. And this one, I... I think I converted it to NPIs. Yes, I'm using NPI silks. I think the original was DMC. Oh, I got a mess in here. <laughs> and this is where I am on this one. So the border outline is finished or the bones of the border and I'm working on the bands and I do like it. It's pretty.
pretty. I need to iron these. I don't want these wrinkles to be permanent. Of course, you've seen how I've stuffed stuff back, <laughs> stuff, stuffed things back in the bag, so maybe that explains a lot. <laughs> oh my. What's in this bag? This was gifted to me a while ago by Brenda and Laura, this bag. And it's made by Belinda Blue Mountain, something like that. I love this fabric. I could make a whole quilt out of that fabric. This is GGR. I don't have a lot done on this one. This one I really have gone back and forth again on the linen color. I saw this done at a uh, country sampler one year. It wasn't like displayed. It was like sitting next to the register frame. So I don't know if it was somebody's piece. I don't know. But I did get a conversion from them. So I'm kind of thinking maybe they were going to sell it as a kit. I don't know. Here's the colors. Well, what is the chart, Carol? It's called Anne Ariel, and it's by GGR. And I love this piece. Love it. Now, this is the antique, so it's kind of hard to see a lot of the details. I don't have a lot finished. This is a piece of Dixie Sampler apple butter. And she sells, she used to sell on... Um, Instagram not Instagram Facebook periodically she would have sales on Facebook and it was kind of a first come first served and she gave a time so I'm working on the border and I just need to get a little further I I don't like when I get to a start and then I'm like mm, is this gonna show up and I think it's because some of the letters right there inside started to be like, can you see what I'm talking about? Sometimes it's hard to see what the camera is showing. See these letters right there? Some of them don't show up. But since this is the antique, it's hard to tell if they're supposed to show up. But I remember thinking this was just stunning, stunning. So here again, you know, some of these I could probably say, they're not really whips, they're starts. They're not any different than things I have kitted and I just, I want to stitch. But that's all the numbers, you know. Is 40 whips too many? Is 20 just right? If you, if you have 80 and some of them are just starts, are they really whips? Here's another long-term one, like Andale. I have a friend who's finished this. It's hanging on our wall. It's gorgeous. Everybody's heard of it. Probably a few people have done it. And that is And They Sinned. I love this piece. Love it. Now, my friend did not fill in the grass on the bottom. She, it's a photograph, so it's going to be a little bit glary. She just did the motifs, but she didn't fill in the grass. I'm using the called for over dies and some DMC. And I'm not sure what this fabric is. I don't know. But it takes a big, long, um, it's like a skinny yard. And this is where I am. And I'm, I took out a lot. I had a lot more of the cloud. There's that picture. Are you bored yet? <laughs> Are we watching paint dry? See how the cloud is under the angel? And it went from like baby blue to dark gray and whatever it was, I've got to change it. So I, f I have it noted that I changed 
the cloud. And I like that a lot better. So I just need to, you know, Saturday stitch, Sunday stitch, one of them. It's 40 count something. And I'm not sure what. It's very light, so I just, I don't know what it is. Here's another one that I want to finish. This is Thousand Hills by Plum Street. I just love all these. You know, I used to have the one hanging. It was right here, and it was, um, what was the name of that one? I don't know. Anyway, it was another scripture by Plum Street. So this one, a little bit of progress, not a lot. Not enough to write home about, but better than nothing. So this is where I am on this one. This will definitely be a finish this year. Mark my words. Remind me of that, will you? <laughs> when I lose my focus. This is one that, even though it has a lot of grass and has some over one, it's one that you just want to get into and just finish. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So that one was just random. That wasn't in a bag. This is another Plum Street. This one I've debated on restarting on 40. It's on 36 count. It's another Plum Street. It's an older piece. I saw a gal, she used to be in our stitching group. I think I've told you that before. And she moved. She had this finished. It's called Brother's Keeper about Cain and Abel. Uh, I didn't write down what I'm using on this one. It looks like exemplar, but it's, I know it's 36. It's by Lakeside, but it's a little bit of a loose 36. Here's the colors <laughs> and all their glory. <laughs> Gosh. So I have, a, I have a start, but not a very big start. See, a lot of these, I'm seeing a pattern where I have a little start on the border, and then I call it a whip. But I think I'm going to finish it on this. 36 count vintage exemplar. That's what I thought. It's a very... Some of the lakeside vintage exemplar and exemplar have a little bit of a peachy pinky hue. But I really want to finish this one too. See, it's all good stuff. Nothing wrong with it. The next one is another Plum Street. I think these came out of that Sunday School project bag. This one I'm doing with NPIs. This is called Seven Days of Creation. This has a little bit of the feel of that Peaceful Paradise one. But a lot of it's verbiage, so that'll go fast. I just really like this. And this is where I am on that one. Not a lot. This looks like exemplar too. But I don't see a label on this one. So it's either light exemplar or vintage exemplar. One of the exemplars. Either the regular or the light. Let's see what it calls for because that's probably what I used. <laughs> Vintage light exemplar 36 count. So with the NPI colors. The next one, I've seen a lot of people finish this and I have no excuse. 
My friend made me this project bag with all the animals. And it's called Barbara Anna, Anna All Creatures Great and Small. It's on Vintage Country Mocha, 40 count. I did all the way around on the border and barely a start on the border flowers. And I need to just jump right in and not worry about those border flowers till later, till I get a little bit more progress on it. Don't you think? I think. You know, like jump in right up here, start getting the barn, the pig, the lady, the bee skip. You know, just work on all of this. I think I'll get more motivated. I like to do the borders first, but sometimes that's not real motivating. I mean, it is when you're doing it, but then once it's done, it's like, eh, I'm, I'm tired of working on this one. And this one I'm using DMC, no, I'm not, I'm using Anchor. Which I have a kind of a love-hate relationship with Anchor. To me, you have to cut shorter strength, shorter lengths, because it kind of shreds a little bit. Or it can. Let me put these over here. This is one. I have it in this big envelope because I don't want to bend the chart. I need to just get a copy of it. Oh, I didn't grab the threads for this. I just have the green and the red. But this is Mary. No, sorry, I lied. Alice Clark. By Cross Stitch Antiques, I had a father kind and true. Alice Clark, 1844. I had worked on this for a teeny bit, and I'm using whatever it calls for. I think it's XJU something. Old Sheep by X Jude. And this is all I have done. But it's going to be beautiful. And I just have the red and green silks out so that I can work on this so definitely this one will be worked on soon because I love this piece love it but I don't that's how big the chart is and I don't want to bend it because sometimes you bend and you bend and you bend and you bend and then it ends up with a crease line and then you can't see the symbols another big one I think I showed this last time too so forgive me for Repeating, Jenny Bean for the parlor. This is the alphabet one that's part one. I have that finished. And I'm working on Adam and Eve, which is part two. Um, Sampler Farm. She, uh, she recently finished this. Her name's Carol. And this is where I am on mine. So I'm working on part two. It's on, I believe it's 36 count Wren by Picture This Plus. You can order this from Kitten Stitcher. And uh, for a long time, <laughs> here's some pieces of wool. I have, I, my sewing room's pretty organized, even though it kind of looks like I'm kind of all over the place, but I, it's really pretty organized. I have a lot of stuff, but it's pretty organized. Oh, this is Hannah Tingy. I was hoping to finish her by the end of December, but I did not. What is this in here? Oh, that's a kit for something else. Um, so here's what I'm doing on Hannah Tingy. This is by the Scarlet House. I worked on it in some in November and some in December. She's basically done except the over one. So I did the over one on the cartouche. This is 40 count buttercream or vintage buttercream by Lakeside. And then I decided I really like full crosses. When I started doing this on the top, I keep being afraid I'm gonna throw this in my coffee. I started doing tent stitch and I don't like that. So I'm going back 
and I'm crossing the X's that were only half, which is tedious. So where you see will provide, I've crossed the, the tenth stitch to be, do full crosses and some of the one above it. But like at the top, our fed and for our bread, that's all tenth stitch. Can you tell from a distance? No, but I can tell up close. Will provide is a full cross. I just like it better. So I have to do that hole over one. And actually it's easier to do a full cross to begin with than it is to go back and try to finish the cross, but that's what I'm doing. So I'm in here, so I still have that to do. But it'll get, this for sure will get done this year. And everybody's doing a word of the year. My word of the year is frame, not just for framing, but framing my thoughts and my sentences and my words and my comments with kindness. Right, dear? All the time. Oh, this is barely a start. I started this when I was at Country Sampler last June. I made this project bag myself. The project before that, this was made by, I don't know. I actually thought this was a stitch folk, but it doesn't have her logo thing on it. And this one was made by that same gal that did the tan or gold colored Mayflower. I'm not sure who that was. Sorry. Names escape me. Sometimes I don't remember my own. Um, anyway, I started this a country sampler. It's a big deal to me because I see it on the wall every time I go there and I love it. It's Erica Michaels, Mary Havens. Now, I've done the border here all the way around. I haven't filled it in because there's a color inside those little boxes. This, there's an inner border right here right there next to the words it's all queen stitches and i'm not sure if i'm going to do those so here's where i am it's not a huge sampler and i'm doing it on 40 counts something let's see what i'm doing it on week's parchment 40 count so we'll see Oh, I started to fill those in. More than one needle here for some reason. See, you can see I started to fill in those little. And every time I go, I see it, and I, I want to antique it like they've done it. So I just need to really, I'm not going to worry about the, I need to start on the inside border and those flowers, and then, the house and all of that and then worry about the queen stitches later i can do queen stitches but on 40 count it's a little challenging i think that was in here just a few more and then i'll you know maybe you've already left <laughs> maybe i'm just talking to myself <laughs> this needs to be finished this is like crazy town that i haven't finished this one yet um, this one I started probably 2020, 2019, late 2019, early 2020. It's Adam and Eve Sampler by The City Stitcher. I've told you before, this is one that I saw finished at Tanya, the Scarlet House, at her home, on her wall. And I came home and found that I had the pattern. This is a, um, this bag is by... Carolina Cross Stitch, the great and wonderful Cross Stitcher. She's the one that does the fabulous finishing. And this is just called Adam and Eve Sampler, and this is where I am on this one.
This has specialty stitches, but it's it's still a nice piece and I need to finish it. Some people did different color words. In fact, I think the picture, they're black, but the called for is green and I wasn't sure. And so I'm also doing it in green. Another one I just need to finish. This looks like this is on. Hmm. I don't know what this is on. I didn't write it down. It's a definitely a goldish color. I don't know. Came out in 1993, so this is not a new piece by any means. Faye Rigsby is who I'm talking about, Carolina. I was kind of stumbling over that, but Faye Rigsby did, did this bag for me. She does beautiful finishing. This one will definitely get finished this year. This is the New England Sampler by Scarlet Letter. Project bag came with this. And I like this one because it has a, and this was a gift from, oh, her name escapes me. She runs the Homespun Facebook group. Uh, golly, but it was made, the bag was made by Bella Rose Needleworks. It's very pretty. I'm sorry, I'm having a brain explosion. Um, it's the New England Sampler. This would be a good one to do on that new Cedar River linen. I think mine is, I, ha I had ordered some and I think it's coming very soon. So this is my progress. Sorry for the wrinkles. I really like stitching on this, so this will definitely be finished this year. I want this on my wall. So see, I could have this, and then I could have Ann Dale that's just a little bit that vintage pair. I think it's nice to have different colors of linen, um, you know, on your walls. Makes for a nice variety. Spice of life, you know. Ah, there's another little. Okay. That really bugs me. I'm going to have to look up her name because that's rude of me not to be able to tell you her name. Hold on. going to come to it very soon. Come on, Carol. That's terrible. Okay, let me look at here. My goodness. Okay, I can't find it. <laughs> I don't like Facebook. I think it's hard to navigate. Which, by the way, thank you to everybody that's posting along with me on their sampler, my weekly sampler post. I think it's so fun to see what everybody has stitched, new and old, and I just love it. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who's, who's um, playing along. This next one needs to be finished. Why is all this stuff in here? That's crazy. This is Ann Rayner. This is not available. Sarah Stewart Hardiman is close, but I've had this for a long time. 
I went back and forth on the colors, finally decided to use Tanya's conversion and she used NPIs. So this is where I am on Ann Rayner. I have quite a bit of the top and the border. Flowers are all done. I'm doing this 46 count. Uh, I think it's Weeks Parchment. And I just need to get on with it. So there's a lot of color changes in the letters on top and I need to start down here like all of this and get going on it. Yes, you do, Carol. This is getting to be kind of a boring floss tube. <laughs> oh, I need some entertainment. <laughs> Marching band or... You know, we like parades, so we might as well have a marching band in the parade. Or the one, isn't it the granny dancers? <laughs> Come dancing through. This is Louisa Coolamore by Hands Across the Sea. I think the last three that I have to show you are all Hands Across the Sea. I haven't done any more on this one. Oh, and I didn't, where is my, um... I didn't show you my Ann Grimshaw. That's the Quaker one. Well, maybe I'll show you next time. Obviously, it didn't get in this room. I would love to get some progress on this. It's huge. And I still have Harriet Salt that I'd like to do also. Louisa Coolamore. I've just worked on that very top alphabet. So, boo-hoo. Not much done on that one. And then these last two are um, the first one is Anne Ufendel. This was it wasn't the first book that Nicola came out with, but it's the first one that I bought. Hands Across the Sea, Anne Ufendel. It's in here somewhere. I need to really get going on this one. I mean, I've, I occasionally pick it up. The bones of the border are done, working on flowers. And I just need to, to get going on it. Is it Christy Crosshatch Quilts? It has quite a bit of progress on it. Somebody I was watching. So that's Anne Ufendel, and I'm using the Called For of Aresois. And the other one is a pitiful little tiny start on Ann Morrison. And this one is on, uh, well, first of all, Ann Ufendel is on whatever the called for. What was the called for? Hold on. This, this book is like, goes one way and then goes the other way, you know, like this and then this. So depending on what side you open it, it's either upside down or. The front's upside down or the back's upside down? That's what I'm trying to say. I'm using a blah, 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 Lakeside Pecan Butter, 40 count. And this one I'm using the 45 count Jersey Cream. This is Ann Morrison, and that's a pitiful little start. See, I have a lot of things that are just barely starts. So, let's get some progress. So for those of you that think I've stitched a lot, and I st <laughs> obviously I have a lot of things that need to be finished. Oh, Ann Morrison is being done with the 103. And Ann Ufendel has been, is being done with the uh, uh, Averis uh, Soie d'Ager. That's the skeins. Well, somehow I forgot to bring in my um, Ann Grimshaw, so I'll show you that next time. And I'll be back in two weeks. I don't really think I have any, um, I don't know what this, this goes to. I think it goes to this. I don't really have any quilt videos planned. I have some things I'm working on, so maybe when I get some finishes on some quilts, then I can come back with a quilt video, but for now, I will just see you in two weeks. 
and I hope to get some progress on my um, Margaret Dyson. I'd love to get it finished so I can get back to some of these samplers that I really enjoy working on. So I don't know if you counted, but there was more than there should be and not enough progress on a lot. So it's just encouraging because now I want to go work on them all. So I hope you all are having a good day. Uh, we're having some wonderful, nice, warm weather. I don't do snowmen <laughs> for that very reason. So anyway, hope you have a good day and I will see you later. Love you. Bye.